Welcome to pain. Okay, have you ever heard of a pain management system, pain management doctors? Okay, well, I had um, patients that had, had diabetes and pain and everything else. This one gal with diabetes, I gave her some recommendations and I told her, I said, um, this is what you got to do and we're going to correct the diabetes. She says, well, this is totally different than my doctor who's managing my diabetes. I said, I don't want to manage it. Okay, I wouldn't want to fix it. Pain is not a problem. Pain's an alarm. And the problem is, so now we're going to go over headaches, neck pain, mid-back pain, gut pain, low back pain, joint pain, everything. Is pain a problem or a clue? Now, when we look at what normal configuration is, you've got a lordotic curve here, kyphotic curve here, lordotic curve here. The system is going to function correctly. If you live in modern society, there could be loss of curve or reversal of the curve. Now, is the body smart or smart? I know, I'm only giving you one choice. Okay, so if this head is thrown forward when it should be balanced, these muscles are going to be strained. So if you do have neck pain, it's a clue that there's a problem. If the normal back is like this and it curves in or around or there's trauma, this is going to be a clue that there's a problem. The nerves that supply the heart come out of here. The spinal cord stops at this level. Any pressure on that area is going to negatively affect the whole gastrointestinal problem. So let's look at the problems and look at the solutions. So if you break pain down, pain is not an alarm. So when people say, but doc, what do I do about this pain? You're going to die with it. It's never going to leave you. It will always be there. Because it's not there. I mean, the, the quality of your life depends on the quality of questions you ask. If you say, what do I do about this pain? Fuck, I want it there. But if you look at pain as an alarm, so then I want you to say, Doc, what do I do about this alarm? Okay, then it makes sense. Because you only have a couple of things that are going to give you those alarms. You're going to have muscle alarms, joint alarms, organ alarms, and head alarms. Okay, d does that make sense? So, so I can't think of any other alarm on the body. Because it's not a painful signal, it's a clue. Now, I've got a couple of things that you can do here. Now, moist heat. What does moist heat do? Well, it's hot and wet, and it's going to rush blood to the area. So if you're going to rush blood to the area, it makes a lot of sense, because would heat help muscles? Absolutely. You're going to rush blood to the area. It makes sense. If you put heat on joints, is that going to, if, if I put a hot cloth here and take it away, my skin's going to be red. That's because the brain senses that difference in temperature and rushes blood to the area. So that means joints are going to fill up with fluid. If we have an organ system, this is why we talk, and you see us working on kids and adults who have organ dysfunction, we talk about putting moist heat on the gut, which rushes blood to the area, stimulating that parasympathetic. And this is also when people are chronically constipated. Like if your kids are constipated or your husband's constipated, put moist heat on there, okay? And, and this is great for guys, because if our wife is sick or hurt, I mean, and we don't know what to do, it's a nightmare. Okay, and this, this is a normal guy. Would you take that pain on in a fraction of a second? Absolutely. But it's freaking horrible if your honey or kids are hurting and you don't know what to do. It's particularly a guy like you who's in charge. Okay, so this moist heat on the tummy will help. And then when you look at headaches, I've got a couple of things here for different headache pains. Now, when you look at all of these, all of these are different types of headaches. So when you look at sinus, the greatest way to identify if there's a sinus problem is to put one hand on the front, one hand on the back, and squeeze. And this shouldn't change the headache. But if it does, it means those sinuses are trying to break free, and that'll be a clue that it's sinuses. So what can you do with sinuses? Oh, I got it. Breathe in some steam. Do the sinus breathing, the yoga breathing. In through one nostril, hold it for five seconds, and then out. 
then in through one side, hold it for five seconds, and then breathe out. And you keep doing this back and forth, and that'll desensitize the sinuses. Or you can breathe steam in. That will also help the sinuses. When you're looking at migraines, that's going to have to do with the neck. And if we've had x-rays of you, and you have had migraines in the past, okay, we're going to see a structural deviation there. So just getting the curve back in the neck will help that. And the general ones, migraines and headaches, migraines can come from a combination of sinuses, facial structures could be out, cervical spine. The most common headaches, 97% of them, come from the neck. And how do you fix those kind of headaches? Take an x-ray, get to a chiropractor, somebody that's going to do a post x-ray to show that they've fixed the thing, and that's it. Now, the eye strain headache, this has to do with everybody on a computer. You're on the computer for hours. Now, the neat thing is, if you're working in the yard and your muscles are sore, it'll take a day to rest them. I mean, you could use moist heat, but the muscles of the eye are smooth muscles. They can relax and regenerate in about 30 seconds. So I'm going to give you an exercise to do the eye strain headache. Now, number one, you've got muscles inside of the eye that dilate or open up and they constrict. If we can have them open up, that's going to relax the eye. So here's an exercise. So you want to cover your eyes and make it as dark as possible. Then with it still dark, you want to open your eyes and try and focus in to see your hands. In the dark, when you open your eyes and try and focus, the pupils are going to dilate. And you'll feel, you'll feel when you try and see the inside of your hands, you'll feel the eyes relax. So try, keep it dark, try and see the inside of your hands. And you'll feel, you'll feel the eyes relax because they're dilating in that darkness. Now, how many people felt their eyeballs relax? Isn't that cool? I know, it really works. And so if you have that eye strain headache, you can lock yourself in a closet or just cover your eyes, make it super dark, and just hold that for around 30 seconds to a minute. That'll knock it out. You'll be good for another two, three hours. Stress. Now, has anyone ever seen a cat under stress? Yeah, like that. Humans are the same way. The muscles run down either side of the spine. They're not under conscious control. And human beings are the same way. So under physical, chemical, or emotional stress, these muscles will, will increase in tone. Now, if you have a normal configuration, they're going to increase tone on both sides. It won't be that big of a deal. But what if you had a reverse curve or loss of curve in the neck? By God, you know, the shoulders are going to tighten up. This is why in English we have sayings like, you're such a pain in my neck. Okay? Because if the neck is off and you get these muscles firing off, you're going to feel it more on one side than the other. And this will be triggered by emotional stress, physical stress, or chemical stress. So just know that any time you get any kind of stress, and there's only three, physical, chemical, and emotional, it's going to fire off these muscles. And that's, good. that's why at nighttime, if you're sleeping and you get that fight-or-fight stimulus, that's why we recommend night co eye coverings, nightshades, why we recommend white noise, and then that will keep you functioning correctly. So when you look at stress, absolutely that's going to cause it if you have a problem with the structure. Then we look at allergies. Okay, Allergies is an abnormal recognition of a foreign protein. When you talk to your grandparents and great-grandparents, none of them had allergies. When you talk to your kids, you're looking at about 10% to 20% have allergies. Okay, And that's an abnormal recognition of a foreign protein. It's, um, you can desensitize the system so they'll never have allergies by healing the gut and stopping any injections. The reason allergies are so common now is because we're injecting foreign proteins in there, we're damaging the gut flora, and they're getting foreign proteins in the bloodstream. So allergies, you can solve by desensitizing the person. Like, like if you had a jungle disease, and only penicillin would save your life, but you're allergic to penicillin, 
takes around 48 hours to get over that allergy. Oh, yeah. Insomnia. Do we have exercises to change sleep? Yeah, that's when the body regenerates. This is something our parents never taught us. You know, if they said, look, sleep's the most important part of your day, that's when your body regenerates, we would do it. So look at our sleep restriction therapy, super important, and then poisoning. What kind of things can give you that, that people are consistently poisoning themselves with that can cause headaches? You're right, alcohol. How did you know? Okay. No, it dries you out. Okay. So, so this is a common, common poisoning. Just make sure that if you do, and it's okay. I mean, figure the longest lived males on the planet are from Sardinia. and They drink seven liters of red wine a month, which is okay. But there's very little sulfites. Their diet's high in minerals. They're going to hydrate a lot. So no, if you know anyone that's going to go out and, and drink a, a lot, clear alcohols have less estrogenic effect. Darker beers have higher minerals. But whatever, you've got to increase your vitamin C, omega-3s, and water. The solution to pollution is dilution, so water. But also poisoning is going to be dehydration. Poisoning could be toxic fast food. Poisoning could be MSG. Okay, so if you look, and let's say your kids or spouse or somebody you love has a tummy ache, the solution to pollution is dilution. Get them fresh water. Fresh water, coconut water. You know, all the things that you can get in the system to clean out the system. Does that make sense? So moist heat is good for just about every problem unless it's an acute sprain strain. Then I would put ice on it for the first day. After that, moist heat is the way to go. Water. Now, what kind of things can you use water for? Would water help muscles? Yeah, because dehydration... And if you're working it a lot, you build up lactic acid. And lactic acid has some benefits. It increases strength and endurance, so it's fantastic, but it does make you sore. So if you're able to increase your water, it's going to help the fluid inside, the blood to get a little bit more um, oxygenated, and it's going to allow that, that muscle to get the oxygen it needs, because water is going to be fantastic for that. All the joints you have are hydraulic. Water is fantastic. Does, in, in the disc, the disc in the spine, if you look at how important this is, the discs are 70% water, and they get their nutrients through movement. Now, if you're talking about movement down here at the L5-S1, which is where a lot of people have problems, because you, when you're sitting now, you're increasing the pressure, compressing that disc. This is why a lot of insane radiologists will say it's compressed. Yeah, no kidding. It's compressed on everybody. Welcome to, you know, 2024. How do you fill it up with fluid? Drink more water and get it moving. Movement, it fills that up. So if you have been sitting for a while, you're dehydrated, you're sweating, you go from sitting to standing and you got that pinch back there, okay? Is that a problem or an alarm? It's an alarm. And you can get rid of that pinch by drinking water and moving. Water is the greatest pain reliever, okay, and it's the most important function if you're fatiguing out in the afternoon and you've got to be working until 8, 9 o'clock because you've got big meetings. Yes, I'm talking to me and you. <laughs> Water, we forget to drink. It's the most important aspect for brain function. Movement. Oh, I'm stiff and tired and sore. I've been flying all day, okay. What do I have to do? No, not take an Advil. Why do you suggest that? Okay, no, it's move. Get up, move. When I'm in the plane, I'm moving around. When I'm here, I'm moving around. Because what does movement do? Movement allows the fluid to flow into those joints. It, allow, it, it, it literally fills them up. This is why when we talk about, did I, did I ever give anyone in here an exercise to turn sitting into movement? Yeah, the foam piece. 20 minutes in, 10 minutes out. 20 minutes of pressure, then you relax it for 10 minutes. So that is inducing motion. It's inducing movement, and that allows fluid to get into the system. Can you pass this one back?
So movement is the key. If you have lack of movement, like a pinch, where, where maybe this pinch has been there for years, and you want to just hit it, because hitting it just is going to feel better. Okay? Now, is this good movement, or is this good movement? This is better movement. I know, but if I do this on Sukhumvit, I'm going to get a whole bunch of people throwing bots at me. <laughs> okay. But movement is a nutrient for the brain. This is why if you're feeling fatigued out, if your muscles are tired or everything else, man, just move it. Move every joint everywhere. That stiffness and tightness is telling you you're not moving right. Now, a lot of alarms are coming from inflammation. And inflammation is a repair process. I'm creating inflammation. When you're doing this, you're creating inflammation. When you're sitting with a phone piece, you're creating inflammation. And inflammation creates free radicals that can damage healthy tissue. So what do we need? Antioxidants. Vitamin C, omega-3s, but all plants. All plants have antioxidants in them. And that deactivates the free radicals. Okay, now people always ask, Doc, how many... How many omega-3s can I eat? I don't know. How many cans of sardines do you like? You know? So how many cans of sardines can I safely eat? I know. As many as I want. I know. <laughs> so you could do double the dose, triple the dose, quadruple the dose, as long as the omega-3s are from anchovy, mackerel, and sardine. It's fine. Vitamin C. You'll know when you've had too much vitamin C, you get diarrhea. Okay? And then water. Water is the best pain reliever ever. So when you're looking at these omega-3s, will that help organ function? Absolutely. Because when you're in a chronic state of stress, when you have this alarm going off, you have decreased blood supply to the gut. So would moist heat on the gut help? Absolutely. Would drinking more water help the whole digestive process? Absolutely. Diaphragmatic breathing, does that help move the organs around? Absolutely. Vitamin C and omega-3s, absolutely. So how do you move the organ tissues? <sighs> Diaphragmatic breathe. <sighs> right now I'm moving all my organs. I'm moving all the lymph. <sighs> now I've had about a quart and a half of water and three cups of coffee. <sighs> and it's not even noon. <sighs> okay, so I am literally massaging my organ tissue. And the head, we already know the things that we can do there. D does that make sense? So there is no such thing as just pain being a dragon attacking you. Every time there's a symptom, there's a clue. But we are not taught this in the victim society that we got now. So if you consciously, because it's so easy to get involved in the pain, and those thoughts will suck you into the pit of hell. But when you understand that it is not a problem, it's an alarm telling you that there is a clue. And by God, I mean, everybody's got moist heat somewhere. Everybody's got water. You can always move wherever you are. Okay, even in a little tiny airplane seat, you can move. Okay, and then you always got vitamin C and omega-3s and specific exercises. You can do them all everywhere. Does that make sense? Okay, now any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, God. Oh, good God, yes. Okay. And, and like those other things, too, that they spray in the nose that, you know, clears up your sinuses. If you've ever used them, what's it feel like an hour later? The sinuses are 10 times more closed than they would have been in the first place. Think of this. If, if I scratch myself, I break tissue. And what's my body's first response? It's going to release histamines. That's why it turns red. What do those histamines do? The histamines initiate the immune system response. It shuts blood supply down so that, that the scabbing can start to form. And then it increases or vasodilates to rush more blood to the area for healing. So histamines are one of the most important part of your entire structure because you're breaking and building a billion cells a day. So you have histamines everywhere. But what you're going to see, histamine intolerance, histamine hypersensitivity, mast cell activation. You're going to hear all of these crazy, insane conditions that our children are going through now. 
because we're treating their bodies, we're training their bodies to react with inflammation. Like in our age group, okay, nobody in our class had asthma. Nobody had an EpiPen in case they had allergies. Nobody was allergic to anything, okay? That would be like one person in the whole school district. It wouldn't be 25% of the class. But now, inflammatory bowel disease, inflammatory brain issues, meningitis, um, pulmonary inflammation such as asthma, uh, inflammatory bowel disorders. I mean, all of these, these inflammatory diseases are because the body is getting tissue damaged. Okay, is that evil or evil? Okay, well, I mean, you got two choices, either ignorance or evil. You're right, ignorance is the best choice. <laughs> yes, ma'am. What do you do if you have really bad hay fever? Okay, at the initial, like when you're sneezing and coughing, you just want to get, get done with it. Okay, vasodilate. Get some essential oils. And this is where like eucalyptus oil is really, really good. I was in um, hiking. This is, well, it was BS before Sarah. Okay, and I was hiking with my girlfriend whose kid had an asthma attack. And so I picked up some eucalyptus leaves, rubbed it together, and had the kid breathe it in. Okay, and luckily that was antimicrobial. Uh, the, the immediate allergic reaction which caused the asthma attack, okay, it calmed him down and he was fine. And then I got him more water, which is going to thin it out. Because what is hay fever? It's, it's an abnormal response to a normal, um, to a normal protein. So, like, if you have, has anyone in here ever vacuumed? Okay, I know you haven't, but have you ever seen anyone vacuum? Yeah. When they dump the vacuum, it's a bunch of gray gooky dust. So imagine this. You have that big pile of gray gooky dust. And if I go like that, what's going to happen? Okay, I'm going to cough, sneeze, my eyes are going to water, my throat's going to clog up. Is that a normal response? Yes, of course. But what if I'm walking along and one part per billion touches the mucous membrane, then all of a sudden my eyes water, my okay, all of this changes. Okay, Is that a normal response? Absolutely not. So it's a hypersensitization to the mucous membranes. During an attack, get water, fantastic. Moist heat on the sinuses, that's going to help. Okay. Vitamin C and omega threes would that help with the histamine response and the allergy response? Yeah, because they're antioxidants. Would movement maybe desensitizing? Because if you have a pinched nerve in your neck, and that nerve supplies those sinuses, has anyone ever had their arm fall asleep? Yeah. What's it feel like when it comes back? It's all pins and needly. So if you compromise the nerve to an area, it's hypersensitive. Wow, I guess this would actually work for that too. Thanks. But then desensitize it because you can get over allergies very, very quickly. Look at the leaky gut. Get local honey if it is allergies or environmental. Okay, and then slowly reintroduce. Find out what you're allergic to and then slowly reintroduce it. Well, let, let's say it's strawberries. You eat strawberries, you break out in hives. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is put the back of a spoon and rub it on an organic strawberry and lick it. Okay, you'll do that every day for a week. Then you might be able to take a, a little piece of the strawberry, mix it in a big thing of water and drink that. So you're going to desensitize it. And so you can desensitize, because I get patients that have been on a food restriction diet because their, their allergist said they're allergic to everything and they're in there eating rice and water. And so we get them back to eating stuff by slowly desensitizing their system over that response. Does, does it... Oh, there, there is proteins in there. And that's, that's one, one of the reasons. And, but a lot of people are allergic to strawberries, not from the strawberry itself, but from the pesticides they're exposed to. Yeah, but I, I just use strawberries because it's like a lot of people are afraid of it. You can do the same thing with shellfish. Yeah, the same thing. You just rub it on the outside first, put a little piece in water, you know, so you slowly reintroduce it. Yeah, and then you'll be down to eating everything. 
Any other questions? Yes. Yep, yep. Uh, the difference between herbal remedies and modern medicine. God, I hate saying modern medicine because medicine sounds good. Okay, you mean modern chemical therapy? Yeah. Okay, good. Just checking. Well, the, the cool thing with herbal remedies is herbal remedies pretty much have been around for thousands of years. Like Ayurvedic medicine is brilliant. But Ayurvedic also has a saying, when diet is poor, medicine is of no good. When diet is good, medicine is of no need. So herbal remedies, like when we talk about omega-3s and vitamin C for any of these, these alarms that could go off, these just deactivate the free radicals during the inflammatory process. Where chemical therapy, which is, some people call it modern medicine, it stops that inflammatory process. So herbal remedies are absolutely with thousand times more preferred than getting a chemical therapy to stop the process. The chemical therapies are only needed in emergencies. Like, like um, 32 years ago, I had both my legs broken, sternum fractured and skull fractured, front teeth knocked out. I'm telling you, morphine is wonderful. Wonderful. I asked the nurse out the same day I was run over because I felt so good. I was single at the time. Don't take that, okay? <laughs> Opium, fantastic, baby. Okay, they used to put it in cough syrup. I know you think that might be harsh, but no, the kids slept good. <laughs> yeah, they put cocaine in a bunch of stuff too. It's just the herbal remedies are always better, but I'd still look at the underlying cause. So if someone is going to take an herbal remedy because they have a regular hay fever response or an herbal remedy for, for hair loss or herbal remedy for digestive disorders, I address the underlying cause. But herbal remedies, usually thousands of years behind them. Any other questions? Did, did you find this interesting? I know, it's totally cool. But if anyone says, but doc, what do I do about this pain? I'm going to say, what, is that pain or is it an alarm? And then I'm going to ask you, give me four or five things that you can do to solve that. Because I'm telling you, if you just do the moist heat or the water or the vitamin C or the movement, you're going to be, you're going to be better than you would be if you took a pain reliever and you're actually going after more of why the body is giving you that signal. Make sense? Crap on crap. Thank you very much.